Hi, everybody. Uh, let's start talking about Chapter 7 and how to account for accounts receivable and bad debts. Throughout this semester, we have been recording sales of merchandise and services on account. Example, on July 2nd, we made a credit sale of $950 to our customer, Albert Brown. The cost of the sale was $650. Please pause this video and record the two journal entries required from this transaction. From Chapter 4, you learned that you need to debit accounts receivable, <clears throat> $950, credit sales, $950, debit cost of goods sold, $650, and credit merchandise inventory, $650. Carrying this example just a little further then, when we receive payment from Albert Brown, we need to make another journal entry. Please go ahead and make that journal entry. Did you debit cash and credit accounts receivable for $950? Let's take a look at how we keep track of accounts receivable in a little bit more detail than we've discussed before in prior chapters. In Chapter 7, it says that all of these debits and credits to accounts receivable are going to be recorded in the general ledger. That's not different from what we've talked about before. But in Chapter 7, it introduces the concept of a subsidiary ledger. The ending balance in this example in the general ledger in a, the accounts receivable account was $1,550. That doesn't give us enough detail to know who owes us how much money. So in addition to keeping track of accounts receivable in the general ledger, we also must keep track of accounts receivable in the subsidiary ledger. We have a customer card for each of our customers and every debit and credit relating to that customer gets posted on that customer's card. And at the end of an accounting period, we should have a balance of receivable from each of our customers. And the total balance receivable from each of our customers must equal the ending balance in the accounts receivable general ledger account. The general ledger is the control account the subsidiary ledgers gives the specifics of who owes us how much. In this example, J. Kent owes us $900, in Grange owes us $650. Together, the total receivables do equal the $1,550 shown as our debit balance in the general ledger account. Well, that's it for this video. When we come back in video lecture number two, we'll start to talk about what we do and what happens when customers don't pay us.